Hello everybody, I am Tom and you are watching me play Vampire. This is the same recording session as last time, but um, I was coming through here, heading towards the church, and I was going through this area here, where I fought a big beast and a couple of scowl, and there was another beast up here, by the looks of it. Down there. I'm tempted to jump down there and fight it, but at the same time, I don't want to get caught by the pre one Because I can hear pre one about. I mean, I guess I can't see any? And this is a lower level than the other one. And I can cheese the shit out of it. The big downside to these guys... Ow. Don't run out of stamina, please. I really need to up my stamina. Jesus. Jesus, get up. Got it. That was close though. Heal. Watery sturdy blood sample. Cigarette case. Ten shillings. More money over here. That's actually significantly difficult, I would want to point out. The other one seemed easier, but maybe it's just me playing worse. It's also a possibility. Because the other one was high level, it was level 12, I think. Whereas that one was only level 10. Pre Rune Exterminator. And pre win gunner. I wonder if I could have led these guys in here to fight this thing. Can I? I can. I bet what I could have done is actually. Oh, interesting. Not exactly a treasure chest, a battered box, some knickknacks, and a letter. Interesting. Uh, inventory, rather. Small box containing a few trinkets and a letter. Barrett, there is no easy way to say it, so I'm going to be blunt. We can't keep on like this. At least I can't keep on like this. If Joe ever finds out about us, about his wife and his best friend, it will crush him. And then he will kill you. We had some good time together, but let's face it, I'm never going to be your Jane Lewis. You knew it, and I know it. Uh, sorry, you know it, and I know it too. So I'm ending this, right here and right now. If you agree with my decision, I'm sure you'll find a way to be happy again. You, Joe, and me in time. And then the most important part of our story will have to be preserved. Until that day, I wish you'd forgive me. Goodbye for now, Jane Peterson. Ah, here we go. Uh, ingredients. Aqua Fontis, Illa Repetitia, Idium Stellata, Hydrogen pro Proto Oxide, Excipient, and Nil Aloid. What I'll do now is I'll actually look up- some of these I know, some of them I don't. So for the ones that I don't know, I'm actually going to chuck up the translation from Latin into what that actually is. Functionally, chemically, for what most people would understand and chuck it up to see whether or not this is actually something that would help people with colds and the flu or things, or whether it's just bullshit. My suspicion is that it's all bullshit. But, I'm not sure. A love letter from Joe Peterson's wife addressed to Barrett Lewis. Who should I give it to, I wonder? I love how happy he was about that little bit. Oh. 
The Swamboro Miracle Elixir is a fraud. I looked at the ingredients, apparently. <laughs> so I don't even have to look that up, but I will anyway. Um, so apparently that's fraudulent, and Jonathan Reed knows that that's fraudulent. Um, let's see. Oh, that's... okay. So that's her husband. They both have the... One's a fraud, one's a con, but they have the same thing. What else updated? Barrett Lewis. Here we go. Barrett had an affair with Joe Peterson's wife. Um... Darius is the right arm of Dorothy Crane. He has bronchitis, which I don't think I can yet heal. Alright. So that was interesting. I'm glad I noticed that. But... I want to get past these pre one And I wonder whether it's going to be easier to actually go through this way. I figured it would be easier to go through the way with the monster because... Well, if you get rid of the monster, that should help, right? Pro and Gunner, they're all like level 10, which means that I should be able to take them out fairly easily, but... I need some blood, please. I can now safely come into this room. Whoa, that guy teleport? Um, he's... Fucking Kill it all you <laughs> he's spraying me with poison, which I don't like. That does a lot of damage. Run. Well, that worked out well. He did a lot of damage with whatever that poison was. Alright, come in here, loot these guys. Apparently only loot one of them. Apparently the other one didn't drop loot, but that's okay. So that could do a lot of damage. Um, let's see, that way I can't go... The chest over here. I could have snuck past them, but I wanted to kill them. Because fuck the pre-win, essentially. Alright, so this takes me to the chapel, which is the way I wanted to go at the very start of the last episode. Well, at the end of the last episode. Find Clayton in the area, okay. No one behind there. How long have we known each other? We even used to be neighbours, for Christ's sake. I'd prefer not to give you another beating, Barrett. I was about to say, his, uh... Welcome, sir. Please, take a browse of right. my wares. I talked to the wrong I'm one. Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. Fair enough. Um, the, the little, uh, picture of the other guy, I was about to say he looks like a gangster. It, it looked like the, uh, the classic, like, hat down gan gan gangster smirk, I should say. Um, 
And by the sounds of it, he was running this guy down for money, so... Do I give him the box? I'm not sure. Not sure yet, anyway. How is business around here? Business? I had no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. Interesting. Yeah, see, there you go. Oh, you can't see it from me if I go here. There you go. Look at this smoky looking dude. Barrett is in a tough financial situation because of Joe's extortion. Barrett had an affair with Joe Peterson's wife. So I definitely don't want to give it to Joe Peterson because he will kill Barrett. I'm almost certain of this. Although I wonder if maybe he already knows. And if he already knows, that could be a reason why he's extorting him. Hard to say. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit, and no sign of the bottom yet. Fair enough. Have you been hurt? No, but that's only because I ran like hell. Those men were raving lunatics, I Skull. Not even able to speak anymore, just screaming. Attacked by Skull, obviously. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me. Came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever. Madness. Something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged, though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Interesting. So I may actually give the box to him after all. Barrett, you had an affair with Joe's wife, didn't you? Yeah, I did. She's the only woman I loved. My first regret is that she stayed with Joe after Harry was born. The second is I never shed a tear when she died. Did you ever try talking to Joe? Never. But I suspected he knew everything, even without knowing it. And he decided to make me pay in his own way. Do you mean... You're Harry's father? No one will ever know for sure. And it's better that way. And I don't believe I'd have been all that bad as a dad. It's very sad. Right then. Show me what you have. Um... Good handle part. Common trigger. I don't know if there's anything I need to buy off him, necessarily. But it's good to know he's here later when I need to buy stuff. Is he buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? <laughs> no, I don't think he does. Uh, nope. Nope. Alright, I'll give the box to you. I found this box in an abandoned building nearby. I believe it belongs to you. Let's have a look. Yeah, this is mine. So, you face those loons that roam around there. Extraordinary. I suppose I was lucky. Luck is a commodity round here. Yours should be properly rewarded. About this package, it's <laughs> not cool. just tools and trinkets, is it? I want to be rude or anything after your kind gesture, but it's none of your business. I mean, fair. It isn't my business. Have you heard of a nurse called Dorothy Crane? Nurse Crane? So the bitch really is a nurse then. Always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. Um, I don't actually know if she is an excellent nurse. So she's trying to help her fellow immigrants. Why would that make her a villain? Dorothy Crane ain't even a real name. Something like Dorothea Craniu. Something like that. 
came to England fleeing the war, I was told. That doesn't explain why she irritates you so much. Your precious nurse crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions for free. I offered to sell it ah. for a fair cut, but no. Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. Yeah. See, that's the thing. In a town like this, giving away free aid does fuck over all of the merchants. The only person who seems to be actually out surviving this is the... Uh, I can't remember his name, but he owns all the houses. Because renting, people still need to rent. You can't... There's no one who owns houses to give away them for free. But for all the merchants, she's kind of screwing them over. Um... Okay. Uh, personal questions. Nothing. Life in London. Nothing. Goodbye. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. Uh, also, that got me a box of junk. I think it was called. Small bag of junk. High resale value. This item can be recycled into components. Okay. And you. I want to talk to you as well. Excuse me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? I didn't answer the first one, so piss off! I'm not a journalist, I'm a doctor. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. Really? But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson to some, but Colossus Joe to most. And I don't remember asking for your service, sir. Do you need it? No, you don't. You're actually quite healthy. Um... Have Stop you heard of a nurse named Dorothy Crane? She's a colleague of mine and is supposed to live around here. Dorothy Crane? Yeah, I know her. One of the few good souls who dare to help the sick around here. Could you please tell me more about her? She's a nice girl. Tries to help the migrants. I offered to give her a hand, but she said my reputation would attract too much attention. Interesting. <laughs> it's kind of funny that... <laughs> The clear gangster who is extorting merchants is, like, the nicest person we've found so far, essentially. Um, I mean, the merchant we just talked to was nice as well, but he's... Nice isn't the right word. He's kind. He actually wants to help people. According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. Fair enough. May I ask what you do around here? I'll do whatever I want, and sometimes even more. Now sod off. <laughs> Fair enough. How did you become the local bully everyone is afraid of, Joe? There's no pride in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well, too. A job? Ah. So you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the Wet Boot Boys, a gang He's an dogs. enforcer. I'm their muscle mm. for their dirty work. Honestly, yeah. Uh, you survive at any cost, even at the expense of others. Perhaps that's just the law of nature. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons. And that's that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by all means necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. Interesting. Clearly he knows. John and Louis used to be good friends. So, he's a he's a kind person working as an enforcer. I assume that's the same, yeah. He's a kind person, but he's working as an enforcer for the Wet, Bo the wet Boys gang. Or Wet Boot Boys? What are they called? Wet Boot Boys, I think they're called. Uh, Life in London. I've now done all of them. Personal questions. Nothing. Goodbye, Mr. Peter. And because he's an enforcer, he sort of had to become this tough guy and put on this act, for want of a better term. Um, I'm actually going to come back this way because if this is the way I think it is. Yep. I didn't come this way before. So I just want to check up this side road. Yeah, okay. This is where I think it is. That is the direction I went before. 
that takes me back down to my safe house, right? Yes. So my safe house is here, and I should be able to run straight through here to get to... Also. Hey, rat. Eat the rat. I can see a dude in there, but is Oh, that's how I get up to the safe house. So there's a guy in this building here. This is where I just walked. Okay, so this building. They must be too busy to answer. Interesting. Wait, what did that say? There's nobody here. Can't add to uh, her house is empty. I mean, it's not because up here I could see this guy. Huh. Interesting. So, like, it's not actually empty. He's in there, but not answering the door. Alright, maybe I go there later. Um, let's see. A couple of people to talk to here. Hello. You look Excuse me, sir. very Are dapper. Are familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Hmm. Yellow. I've never seen yellow before. I guess because main quest, maybe? Green is side quest, yellow is main quest, but also this may just be like... Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? I must confess, some of my rational views have been shaken by recent events. I'll remember to stay away from the district's roughest streets then. Good. That should keep him alive. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. <laughs> so you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. Seems like a, a solid journalist. Clayton wants newspapers to print the truth about Whitechapel situation, okay? Makes sense. Apparently he has fatigue, do which I can cure. Assistance? That would be nice of you, Doctor. Who knows what I may have caught you in my investigation. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. Cool. Um... Have you any idea of the danger you've... I've had... I must... I'll rem... Alright. What is a journey? Ego. There we are. quite honourable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist. Hoping to sell some stories. Fair enough. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. <sighs> it's not criminal necessarily. It's a disgrace. People are left to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. Which is why he's had here doing it. Nothing there, okay. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. 
Why do you care? I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. <laughs> what do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He has no relatives at all? No, except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. He never goes out? No, a few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him. But it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. Interesting. That's very interesting, because that makes me think I can go to the bin and find the letter he ripped up. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Because if we... Th I need to find the letterbox. Don't be shy, handsome. Ah. What can Christina do for you? I'm not looking for what you're selling. But I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed. All right, then. But be quick. Though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. <laughs> a Romanian prostitute. Okay, um... Christina Popa. You're fatigued as well. I can cure that. Do you need any assistance, Miss Popper? It depends on the price of your medicine. Free. I am shocked that you would think I am that sort of man. Forgive my suspicion. I'm so used to liars with good manners. Thank you, sir. Hmm. It's an interesting way of putting it. I'm used to liars with good manners. Uh... Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Hmm. Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? I kind of get it, but you can. Particularly if the reason that you don't suffer poverty or hunger is because you're benefiting from certain things that another community doesn't have, because then you can try and bring those things over to the community to help, but... Christina, I get the have point. You been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. <laughs> you fil filthy whore. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it does. Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. Fair enough. You can put your own life in danger. That's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? <laughs> if you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. <laughs> Fair enough. So she doesn't particularly like her, Johns. Not that surprising, I suppose. Um, life in London, already done that. Personal questions. Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. Huh. 
Short story, the war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left. Interesting. I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. Child would be my assumption. Or maybe that she's pregnant, one or the other. Um... Yeah, like in 1700s London, if you're kind of forced into prostitution isn't the correct word. It's still a choice, but if you can't get a job anywhere else, literally cannot get a job anywhere else, then you limit your options somewhat. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her, but I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania, like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. It's fair enough. I always thought she... I thought she was Irish. She sounded like she had an Irish accent, not a Romanian accent, but... What do I know? Alright, I think I'm done here. Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Okay. So that's going to be it for today's episode. Next episode, I'm going to talk to this priest and then go to the back of the chapel and find this poet. But we're coming up on about half an hour now, so I'll leave it there. So thanks for watching. I shall see you next time.